Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 192, Digital Imaging slash Photoshop for the spring semester 2022. Um, today, what I want to do is skip ahead a little bit. Um, last Wednesday, I covered um, selections. Today, I want to continue with that um, and doing more refined selections, which is covered, which usually involves channels. Um, basic selections cover channels too, but um, to be able to isolate an image that has um, hair or fur, or maybe there's a tree or grass or something like that, and you want to retain the soft edges. Now, the one that they've done in the book here, this is the finished one. Um, I don't think they did a very good job because there's a few little wisps of hair up here and around the knob of her hair and a little bit more in the back that could have been um, selected. But what I wanna do instead is I'm going to, and here's the start file. This is what they start with. And um, here's the background image. And so what we wanna do is we wanna isolate her from the background, um, keeping some of these little wispy hairs in the back and some on the top and a few over here behind her little hobnob and then there's some a few other things that we want to do to it but that's the as far as i'm concerned that's the most important important part of the lesson so i will do that for you today but i'm going to give this a whirl this is an image that i did of my dog um, a photograph that i took of her um, initially it wasn't a very good photograph but if i um go ahead and i turn on all the other layers just to show you um, everything that I did to it, it's a good example of what you may need to do with your postcard. That just combining images um, in and of itself doesn't necessarily always work. So I'm just randomly kind of turning on all the layers that I have. And if you can see my screen, you can see there's a ton of them. Okay. Um, so if I go back and I hit the option or alt key on my keyboard and I click the background layer, you can see that this is what really kind of what I started with. Okay, I needed to really expand um, the top so that I had more sky. I needed to expand the left. I didn't want her nose touching the edge of the piece. Um, I had to isolate her from the background so that I could go ahead and I could um, enhance her colors and her lights and darks and add dodge and burn and that sort of thing to be able to um, um, make her a better image from the background. So this is what I started with. And this is what I ended with. Now, how do I isolate her from the background? So if I go back again, and I turn off, let me undo that. Let's turn back on all of these images, all the layer masks that I created, <clears throat> on and on and on and on. And you'll see what I did here. And we'll come back to the original image and I will isolate her from the background. Maybe successfully, not, maybe not, we'll see. Um, it, sometimes it takes you some trial and error to do this. And you can see I'm turning on all these layers back here. I'm just going to turn them off one by one so you can see how um, my image developed. So if I turn this off, you can see that number one, I tried to have something called a black and white image. I thought, well, would that look nice? And that's an adjustment layer right here. I turn that back off. And you can see that I have the color back on. And the other thing that I adjusted too, just on her, this one right here, you can see that these are all inset in effect. The, um, her, if I turn her off, you can see that there are little subtle changes here, a little bit darkened. So if I turn off the curves, you can see the whole thing darkens up. Well, I wanted to affect, you know, everything. Same thing here, here's levels. And this back again was the black and white. Now, if I turn these back on, you can see that there are little subtle little changes that help brighten the shadow side of her since the sun is coming from the upper right hand corner. So I'll turn those off. 
And then if I turn this one off, you can see that the whole thing is a little too bright, okay? But she is isolated from the background in that. So if I turn her on and turn everything else off, in fact, let's, let's select this one and turn these guys off. So you can see what I'm doing here. Turning all these layers off down here, gradually built all. I guess I need to build that back up. Let's undo that, and bring it back. No, I don't want that. So somehow I rebuilt that. Let's go back, turn all these off. Okay, you can see how she's isolated from the background. So let's go back and let's go ahead and do that. Let's turn off the layer up here. And I'm gonna try and do this from scratch again. So where would I start? I would start with the, um, the object selection tool right here. And let's click and drag around her. Probably before I do that, I should probably um, move it about and kind of crop it and see what the rest of this image looks like. You can see that it doesn't work so well. So probably the first thing that I should do, like we did in lesson two, is I should, you know, because it's at a, shot at an angle, I should probably make sure that it is, um, the horizon line is just that horizontal. So I'm going to use the crop tool, but I'm not going to crop the image. I'm just going to use the straighten tool and click and drag along here to straighten the background. There we go. So she's straightened. Okay. And it's catching up for a second here. It's cropping the image. Hopefully it doesn't take too long and hopefully it hasn't crashed. We will see, huh? That's the case, I may have to open this back up and I apologize if that's the case. It looks like, um, there we go, it did straighten it. So we're good to go. So now what I wanna do is I wanna isolate her. So let's start with the object selection tool. And I'm just going to simply click and drag around her, including the shadow. Now, later on, if we don't want the shadow, we could eliminate that. But I'm just going to select that and see where it gets us. Maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. I don't remember what I did. And it may have been that I did <clears throat> um, with that image. It... Um, it included, yeah, you can see it's including most everything. There's parts of it that, that aren't included. So now I can go back because you can see that part of the shadow isn't included. So you have to decide, do you want that to be part of the selection or not? You can see also that part of her leash down here was also selected, which is kind of a smart thing. But um, we need to decide now what parts we're going to um, keep and what parts we're going to remove. So I would move over here and switch from the object selection tool to the quick selection tool. And let's go around and I'll zoom in here to see what we need and what we don't need. So I'll start from her head. That looks pretty good. Um, the background here behind the bow doesn't exist. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and hit the option or alt key here to get rid of these little pieces here. And again, it just real subtle, subtle things. And I'm going to go around the horn here. And I think I'm going to, for right now, I'm going to select her and not the shadow. So again, on the, on the Macintosh, you hit the option key. On the PC, it's also called Alt key. It's between the control and, and the command key on the Mac. So I'm going to go ahead and 
click and drag with the option key selected here to get rid of the shadow. And I'll go ahead here and I'm going to click and drag along here, to get rid of that. If I want to add to it, I just click and drag. It automatically adds. So I'll click in here. Actually, I want to remove it. My mistake. So I'll click and drag in here. There we go. And it's also going to depend on what you combine it with. So I go around again, we have most of her feet. We need to add this part back here. So we got that. Um, I don't need this little part in here. So I'm gonna remove this from the selection. I need to remove this part from the selection. So again, um, so the, you know, the object selection tool started off pretty well but there's more that needs to be done. And that's gonna be true for everything that you do. It starts off pretty well. And then you can see now it's grabbed part of the, her leash. So I need to come back and hold down the shift key and I need to bring part of that back. Now, if you need to increase or decrease the size of the, um, the tool, um, you can use the left or right bracket key. Those are the keys to the right of the P key. Um, again, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from her selection. So I'm gonna actually come down here and get the shadows already gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of some of this. Oops, see, because she's all in shadow um, I don't need to get rid of all of it. Just little clicks here and there until I grab it all. Now, you may notice on the screen that it's not grabbing all of her, the soft little edges of her fur. And that's what we're going to work on next. So this is a bit more of a challenge than the one that they've given us in the book. See, now it's adding that. So I'm gonna undo that. Let's go back. And I'll make the brush a little bit smaller and maybe that will help, but help me to remove that part of the selection. And if that doesn't work, then we'll just deal with it and work with it later. Now, see, it's not working the way I'd hoped. So maybe I need to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna undo that. And I'm just gonna leave that for the time being and I'll come back and grab it. So now what I wanna do with this is once I have her selected, you know, a general selection, and even though I don't have all of her feathers, that's those little soft edges of her, of her fur selected, that will be the next step. And what we wanna do is at the very top where it says select subject, we can also go up here and say select and mask. That's what I wanna do next. And you can see that this is what we have, okay? It's kind of a rough cut and we're going to get rid of some of it and we're gonna add some of it. So now what I wanna do <clears throat> is, <clears throat> I don't need to remember settings, but what I do wanna do is turn on edge detection smart radius okay and let's see what we can do here we can go ahead up maybe a few pixels color aware let's say object aware okay she may refine mode may result in different edge you know, let's go ahead and try that and see what happens okay let's go back to color aware and again, you have to kind of experiment with this to see what's working. <clears throat> so now what I want to do, over on the left here, again, we can continue to use a quick selection tool. We can continue, we can begin using what is called a refine selection tool. And that's what I'm going to do here. Now, this will add, this will, um, brush tool will do something a little bit differently. I'm going to use the refine selection. And I'm going to start back here and I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. There we go. 
And I'm just going to click and drag along here. And before you know it, you're going to see the little soft fuzzy edges pop up. So as I drag over, you'll see that it refines and I get these nice little soft edges. Let's go to her underside here. And that's looking pretty good. And when I'm done, if I need to get rid of more, now I can do that. Let's go ahead and remove some of that. Come back over here. Let's come back over here and let's refine some of the edge here, here, down at the bottom of her tail. So we can get the nice soft, soft edges. And I'll probably use different tools to get this to remove this part. But again, let's try to click and drag here and notice how I'm getting the nice soft fuzzy edges. That's what you want. Otherwise, it looks like it's been cut out with a cut, you know, a cookie cutter. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here. See, I'm going to go ahead and hold down the option key and bring that back. I want to bring that back. So let's use, um, let's go ahead up here. Got that soft edge. Again, I'm just going to go around. That's too much. So I'm going to undo that. Um, Around her face, her muzzle and stuff, we're in pretty good shape, but around the top of her head, we want a softer edge. And it's you know through her back right here that you're gonna get a pretty strong line. Now I can always delete this stuff later. I can undo that. Okay, bring that back. But that's a pretty good start. Um, there are some other areas in here that need to be brought back. So for right now, um, we want to go ahead and that's a hundred size brush. Um, let's go back here and with that tool selected, I'm going to go ahead and again, select option to see if I can't bring some of that back. Because there are parts of it that I didn't want to get rid of that I probably should have before. Well, for starters, this isn't half bad. It's not a bad start. There's probably a lot more that I need to do to it. In fact, there is a lot more. But I can take you over now to the, the lesson file, and we can show you in a quicker fashion how to do her. But anyway, um, before you select this or before you click OK, under um, output settings, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you select decontaminate colors. Um, you want to make sure that those, the background colors and stuff are all removed. So I'm clicking that. Amount, you know, maybe 90%, 80%. And then what I like doing so that you work non-destructively is you select new layer with layer mask. Okay, that's not always the, ob um, um, the option, but it gives you um, a lot of flexibility when you do it that way. So now I'll go ahead and I'll click okay. Okay, and you can see that I have a layer mask, her isolated from the rest of the image. Now, what I had done before, um, let's turn some of these layers back on. Um, Let's turn this one back off so you can see what I've done. Is that this was, you know, after tinkering with it, I kept, decided to keep the, um, the shadow because I was going to use it in another image. Now, if I want to go back in and here and refine some of this, I can always use the eraser tool. Um, and because I have a quick mask or a, a selection mask, of this, I can make sure that the mask is selected. And then what we'll do, if you want to add to or subtract from the mask, make sure that it's selected here. Make sure that it's linked to the image itself. And then to add to the mask or to subtract from the mask, you use the brush tool and you use black or white. Now, if I have white here, 
and I got to make sure it's turned on. Whoops, wrong one. Which one do I have here? There we go. It's this one up here. This is the one that I have selected. So now, if you want to add to the mask, right now I'm removing from the mask with the white. If I go back to black and white and I work with black, now go in here, make sure that I have the mask selected. There we go. And that's not working. So let me go back. Oh, I had white selected. I want to go back and select black. There we go. So now I can paint out some of that detail by hand. And you can see it's removing very subtly some of those, um, the background that I really didn't want and before. And it depends on how much you want to refine this. Okay. So I have normal selected um, mode. Yeah. So we can go ahead and get rid of some of that. Okay. And you can see that I've corrected some of this. Now, some of this I figured would be made up in the background. Now, every time I did this, um, to make sure that I was keeping everything else, um, I did something that I called that um, I combined layers, but at the same time, I kept the old layers. To do that, you have to use the um, shift option, command key, and then hit E to do that. And all the layers that are selected that are visible will be combined and then will create a new layer at the very top. And that's what I have here, okay? So there's that one. And I accidentally tilted that. So I'm going to go back and revert to saved file because I had, I screwed something up here. I'm going to revert. So you can see that I made sure that the, um, again, horizon was horizontal. And I went back in and I fixed the, whoops. There we go, turn that on. The bags here, um, I fixed the little fuzzies to make sure that they were all nice and I got the soft edges. I actually added to the, to the image so her nose wasn't touching the edge anymore. Um, if we go ahead and we turn some of the other layers back on. Okay, if I turn this one off. You can see how I made sure that the background was a little bit bluer. So that was done with the, um, and a little bit had more contrast. So that was done with here by turning that off using the, under the adjustment layer, using um, uh, curves. Okay. And we also had um, levels that I added to. Again, they're very subtle changes, but I think they enhance the image considerably. Now, here we have an adjustment layer that's just attached to her. Notice how dark she was on her shadow side, and I wanted to pump a little bit of light into it. So this adjustment layer applied only to her separate layer um, affects that quite nicely. And so it makes it a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter there. Okay, so I turn that off, that off. And see how dark it is? I wanted it to be a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter. So these are some of the considerations that you should take when you're doing that. Now, also, <clears throat> surrounding her in the background, because she's on top of everything. In the background, you'll notice that I added a gradient. And I wanted to make sure if I hold down the command key or the control key on the PC and I click back here, you can see that I have her selected and I have a good part of the, the background selected. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that the background had more contrast and was a little bit darker. So that's what I've done here. 
it looked a bit washed out. And that's the way it was that day. It was a bit washed out. But again, layer 10 here is where is before I actually added the, the part to the left. Now, how can you do that? Um, I'll show you. Let's go ahead and select. Um, let's see, what layer do I have here? Okay, I have layer selected, seven selected. Okay, so there are various ways of doing this, but if you have kind of a generic um, image here, in the background, there isn't much detail. It's not part of my dog or anything. It's you know some sand and some of the ocean, some of the background. One of the things that you can do to add to that is that we can try um, stretching it, but there's a very particular kind of stretch to use, or we can try to use, um, make a selection here. We can try to use, I'm just gonna go ahead and select from here. And what I want to do is I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to select, um, I want to try content aware fill. Okay. Now from this, this will give me what this is going to look like over to the right. And it's not exactly the way I want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove her from the equation. And I do that by moving the brush over her so that it doesn't take any content from her. And this will be part of lesson five, in fact. So there we go. Let's take that and let's see if I, my selection gets improved. And it's not a bad way to, to start. Let's see if that looks any better over to the right. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to try something different. And it doesn't. It doesn't look that good. So I'm going to cancel it. OK. Well, let's try another approach. Again, with the same selection, what I want to do is I'm going to go to Edit. And again, this will be the same for you, is that you want to um, experiment and you know, through trial and error and try something you know, a little bit different, what I'm going to do, if, if it isn't working for you, what I want to do is try content-aware scale. So now what I can do is I can take this and I can drag this like so. And because it is just simple um, sand and some water and some waves and the background, that looks pretty good. Now I can hit Command D to deselect, and I was able to extend the background. So that's another trick that you can do. Um, but most importantly, how to make the selection of her is what I wanted to focus on. So let's go to the lesson itself, and let's give her a try. Okay. So I'm going to start again. And this is a little bit different than the book. We're going to go ahead and we're going to use the rectangular. Um, hold on here. We're going to use the object selection tool and start with that. So I'm just going to click and drag a box around her and see where that, that gets us. And it takes a minute and it's doing a pretty good job. But again, if I zoom in a little bit, at the very top, we're missing some of those little loose strands of hair. To the right, we're missing some of those as well. And in here, we're missing some of those. So what I want to do is I'm missing part of her dress here that I want to grab. So let's grab that first. So I'm going to go from that to the quick selection tool. And I'm going to grab a little bit more here. There we go. So now we have part of her dress and we have part of her hair. Then what I'm going to do is what I did before with my dog bagel. I'm going to go in here and say select and mask. And you can see that the outline of her is much easier than what I had before. So sometimes it will take a little bit of work. Sometimes it will go very quickly. 
So now what I can do is with a little bit smaller tool, I'll click and drag along here. You can see that by doing that, making sure that I have this um, refine edge brush tool, it's adding some of those little soft strands. That's what I want. If I click in here, see how it removes some of that background. And if I come back here, we can go ahead and we can add some of the soft strands in here. Not a lot, but a little bit. Soft, soften the tips a little bit here. We're adding some of the soft strands in here. And it's these subtle little things that will enhance the overall appearance of your piece. Now on the face where we have hard edges in her body, we don't need to worry about that so much. We could soften the edge a little bit if we wanted, but because she's isolated from the background, um, you know, it, it, it can be a hard edge. We don't need a soft edge. It's the hair that I'm concerned about right now. So for your postcard assignment, and again, it could be an animal, it could be a person, it could be grass, it could be any number of things that require um, this tool um, to help isolate it from the rest, um, but look natural rather than cut out with a pair of scissors, um, then that's what you need to do. So I'm gonna go back here, we're gonna go back here and I'm gonna, I don't wanna remember settings, but I use smart radius here. Um, let's go back here. If you wanna smooth this, and we don't need to do that, you can do that. We could go ahead and maybe a couple pixels or a couple percentages. Um, we don't wanna feather it. What that will do is it will create a soft edge. Um, contrast, you could, we don't need to worry about contrast, but if you need to enhance the contrast, we can do that. And last one here that you do use from time to time is we can shift the edge. By shifting this to the right, we move it out. By shifting it in, we can push the whole selection inward a little bit. So what I wanna do now is again, like I had done with my dog, select Decan, um, output settings, decontaminate colors, which means that it's going to find all the colors in the background and remove them. And notice that it's showing even more of these soft little frilly hairs back here, which is exactly what I want. And then again, I want to output to new layer with layer mask. And what this does is really nice is that you can see that if I turn that off and I turn this on, we have our original intact. And this one now is just a copy of it. We have it turned off. And that's why I have so many layers um, in the um, image of my dog. So that's a nice feature, okay? Now, some of the other things that they've done in here, uh, since we have plenty of time, I'll go ahead and show you. One of the things that they wanted us to do in here, and you may have to do this in your postcard project, is that if you want to, we can, um, um, bend her head back, okay? You can tweak it a bit. It's called um, uh, puppet morph. I think it's called puppet morph. Let's go ahead under edit. Puppet warp, there we go, puppet warp. Now, in order to do this, we need to flatten this layer, okay? Well, I don't like doing that because by doing that, and that's what the book will tell you to do, is now you've gotten rid of all of that hard work that you just completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a layer, okay, and I'm going to copy it, Command J. So now we have a copy of it, and I'll turn that layer off in the event that I screw this one up. Now I can go ahead and I can throw away the mask, and it will prompt me. It'll say, apply the mask, yes. So now I have an image here, a, a final image without the layer mask. The layer mask allows me to further refine the image. By combining the two, those outside pixels are permanently cut away. So what I can do now is we can use the puppet work tool on this layer. And it's kind of cool. Um, it can be used for any number of things. And what they've done here is we can go ahead and select puppet work on that layer and it creates this little grid. So to be able to bend it back, you have to use 
equivalent of little push pins that make it kind of and keep it fixed and intact. Because if I click on any point now, you know, it just moves it around. Okay. So what I need to do here is starting at the bottom, I'm going to click and begin adding. I probably add too many, but I'm going to add a few here. Let's go ahead here. And let's click here and then down here. And it's, it fixes it to the background. It's like push pins. Okay. Now I can take from here and I can click on it. Okay. And I can hold down the option key or the alt key on the PC. And notice that when you do that, when you select the pin and you hold down the alt or option key, a little wheel appears. Now, when I click and I drag, you'll notice that I can bend it backwards. A little bit more, just to exaggerate it. And when you're happy with it, you click the little checkbox at the top. And there you have it. So here's the, the first one. And here's the um, here's the first one, and then here's the second one. Okay, um, it enables you to take and um, your photographs and manipulate them and bend them and tweak them, distort them a little bit, way beyond um, what the original was like, and it still looks quite natural. Now, what I have seen done with this tool and in other instances, if, for example, to move branches and to bend them and tweak them. Um, that's another good example. Um, you know, take the flora and fauna that's surrounding your scene and manipulate it so that it works for you um, and it works to enhance your image a little bit be better. So that's a nice tool. Then the next thing that they want us to do on here, um, aside, I probably won't get to colorizing it today. I guess we could. We'll see how much time we have. But um, what we want to do now is create a drop shadow. So to do that, I'm going to make, again, make a copy of the layer. Um, this time, I'm just going to click and drag it on here. I'm going to hit the Command key or the Control key on the PC and select everything. And with everything selected, OK, I'm going to go ahead and hit Option Delete. And what that does is it will fill it with the foreground color and make sure that your foreground color is black. And you can see that it, the whole thing is filled with black. This is going to be our shadow. So now what I can do is I can Command D to deselect. I can move it beneath her. And what I want to do with that shadow selected is I'm going to distort it. I'm going to go under Edit, and I'm going to go to Transform. And I'm going to select skew. Okay, now I can click and I can drag and I can move this over like so. And there's our drop shadow. But it's kind of dark, too dark. So I'll click OK. And this is where we can take from layers with the layers selected and we can change the opacity and make it look a little bit better. Okie doke. So that went pretty fast. Um, last thing is we'll go ahead and we will go back to her and let's go ahead and colorize her glasses. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see a pretty good, um, get a pretty good shot of it. And again, with that layer selected, I'm going to try again. This will be my default kind of go to is the object selected. And I want to click around the glasses and see what it does. And it does a pretty good job. But now I want to get rid of the part that is the lens. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go back to the Quick Selection tool. And I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. So I hit the left bracket tool, kind of make it smaller. And with it zoomed way in here, I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Option or Alt key. And I'm going to click and drag in here to get rid of the lens. I don't want that to be in there. 
If I have to make the brush a little bit smaller, I can do that. So far, it's looking pretty good. Uh, depends on how detailed we want this to be. Um, I think this is fine for our purposes, okay? Now, what I prefer to do, I can colorize this image, um, but I'm not too keen on that. What I would prefer to do is create a new layer on top of this and colorize it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to, um, in my color palette here, let's pick a deep green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to paint with it. And on this layer, with that selection, instead of painting normal, because if I go ahead and do that, it's painting with these little speckles and I don't want that. Okay, let's undo that. Um, what kind of brush do I have selected here? I don't know what's going on here. Let's just select this soft or this, this hard brush here. Yeah, by selecting normal, it just paints on top of it like painting a wall. Okay, so instead of using that as your mode, you're gonna switch and all the way down to the bottom here, you're gonna select color. And now when I paint on here, you can see that it's affecting the color, but it's not affecting the, um, the lights and the darks. Now there's a bit more of this, you can see that I probably should have refined a little bit. But the thing that's nice about this, and I can erase that if I wish, is that I left the glasses separate. So I worked non-destructively. So if I or my client decide at a later time, you know what, I would want, I'm not happy with that color. I want it to go back to the tortoise shell color that I had before. I can do that. So as you work, try to work smart. And I know it's kind of hard when you're learning the tools, but um, try to work in a non-destructive fashion. And again, when I go back here to my bagel image, you can see that it started with a so-so image, um, but it turned out to be kind of a nice one. It was a, an, a, something that I wanted to show everybody how to do um, to take an image that was cropped and skewed and how to stretch it and make it a little bit larger. So she's now fits in the frame a little bit better. Um, and how to isolate her. Now, even, I mean, I, I didn't move her to another image, but I've done that, uh, did that to show you how to um, uh, combine her with another image that I had another beat scene that I combined her with. But it was more that I isolated her to be able to create adjustment layers that affected only her or reverse it and affect only the background. And that's something that you'll want to do too, that you'll want to play with lights and darks. You'll want to affect colorization of your image and you'll want to only affect certain parts of them. It's not, it's not only for moving one object to another, okay? It is um, for affecting isolated parts of an image, usually with adjustment layers. So for example, if I wanted, I had, let's see, let's go back up here. And I'm gonna move the black and white one. Let's turn it on here. Now, see, this is affecting everything, but I'm gonna select, I'm gonna move the black and white above this and turn it on. And um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna move it down here. So it's on this image. And I want it to only affect the black and white here. Uh, why was it not working here? Oh, because it's not turned on. There we go. So now you can see that I only have uh, her, she's turned into a black and white and the rest is color. Now I could revert that and do the same with the, the background. I can make the background black and white. Let's undo that. Okay, let's move this back up here. 
and have this affect everything, but I'm just going to have it affect that layer. Okay, so it's affecting just that layer. Um, but now I'll take this image of her and move it up. Come on. Now you can see that I've just reversed that and I have a black and white background with a colored image of her that looks kind of neat. This was kind of popular um, probably a good 10, 15 years ago to take black and white or take color images and convert them to black and white and then leave certain elements colorized. Well, this is how you would do that in Photoshop. So that's something is a, an experience you know, as an experiment, something that you guys might consider doing for your postcard or later on when we do the movie poster assignment. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all I have for today. And I hope this is helpful. Um, as I said, on Wednesday, I will go back to lesson four and uh, cover the prin basic principles of layers. And then next week, um, we'll talk about um, quick fixes, which is lesson five. Um, in the meantime, you know, you should be working on the lessons. You can go in any order you want, really. Um, and then um, make sure that you're also working on your postcard as you complete the lessons. Um, I'm going out of order because I think these lessons will help you more than others. Um, anyway, let's see. I have question here. The question is um, from Bella, do you need to download the pictures and put them in the cloud folder or just a postcard assignment? Well, if you've done your postcard assignment like I have and kept all of the layers, you need only put um, the final Photoshop file in Google Drive. If you're also referring to the lessons, they go in a separate folder. So as you complete the lessons, um, you'll put the finished lesson file, again, a Photoshop file, put that in the lesson folder, which is in your Google Drive folder. Does that make sense? OK. So for, yeah, so if you're if you're doing um, the postcard like I'm doing this here, or doing um, even if we were going back to this one here, um, you can see that we're just using two images. But if we were adding more images and integrating her with you know um, something another image, now if you're um, Doing the selfie photo bomb, you may use less less than four images. You may only need two images. We'll see two or three. But that, as I said, is a little bit more difficult. It's a little bit more challenging um, because uh, you'll have to take a photo of yourself and you'll have to try to make sure that it matches um, the light source matches and the skin tones and the grain of the photograph and everything. So there's a lot of other stuff that's going on to make it work. But if you're just doing the postcard, it would be like the one that I created the other day with the, um, the beach scene, taking my dog and taking the horses and that sort of thing and combining them into one photograph. And this is done all the time. This is what Photoshop is about. Um, initially, Photoshop was created as a tool to retouch photos, but over the years, it has become much, much more than that. And as I said, at the very tip top of my lessons here, I applied a filter to this. Um, let me go back to Bagel here. I'm not real happy with this, but you can see it's taking that photograph and applying a, a filter to it. Um, and, neural filter, make it look totally different. These can be fun to play with. And this is something new to Photoshop. You probably already used these neural filters and other apps that you um, uh, have on your phone. Well, um, 
Photoshop has added many of them to it, to it as well, recent iterations. And later on, when we get to the digital painting, we may apply some of these. They're fun. Sometimes they work really well. Sometimes they don't work at all. Anyway, I hope that answers all your questions. We're done for today. Yes, no. Okie doke. Then I'm going to say goodbye and um, I'll pause the recording and um, you guys are free to go. Okay. Okie doke. Bye bye.